Hi, this is Nick Bravulis. I'm a member of the International Academy of Education. We're doing a series of interviews with authors of a booklet series called Educational Practices, short research-based books that cover basic issues in educational policy and practice. Uh, today's guest is Stella Vosniadu. Uh, she wrote a couple booklets in this series. Today, we'll be talking about one of them called How to Teach Students to Learn. She's also the editor of the Educational Practices booklet series. Stella, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Uh, so this booklet was actually co-authored with uh, three other authors, Michael Lawson, Helen Stevenson, and Aaron Bodner. Um, I'm really interested in this topic because uh, I, I think sometimes we don't do enough to teach students to learn how to learn. Uh, and this really is the basic point of this book. You start with this concept of what you call self-regulated learners. Can you say a little bit more about what that, what that notion means? Okay, let me first say that my co-authors are members of a team, of a research team that we have here at Flinders University, where I work uh, now. Um, and uh, the research is sponsored by the Australian uh, Research uh, Council, and it's a project called Teaching uh, How to Learn. Um, so the idea of um, the self-regulated learning is that students uh, learn better when they have, um, when when they're of course motivated how to learn, but also when they have the knowledge and the strategies that are needed uh, to monitor their learning and to evaluate their learning. So this, this um, idea, this emphasis on students being responsible for their achievement is actually a, a relatively new concept in education. Because for many, many years, uh, we studied how um, learning is influenced by the environment, by factors such as uh, socioeconomic factors, uh, by factors uh, such as uh, our genes, you know, intelligence, um, uh, by, and, and teachers mainly see their role as conveyors of information rather than as facilitators of learning or of teaching students how to learn. So this emphasis on students as uh, being in control of their learning and of their achievement is a relatively new emphasis in education. And, um, and, um, and it and and, and it, it has also uh, brought about a new way of looking at teaching. Okay, teaching not only as transmission of information, teaching not only as uh, content related to content, but also teaching as related to developing students' own, own abilities to learn. Mm -hmm. And and this shift is not actually easy. Um, a lot of teachers and a lot of students do not see themselves as in control, so to speak, of their learning. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's, so it's not it's not easy to kind of um, uh, bring, particularly to teachers, this idea that teaching students, their teaching their students skills for learning is also a main uh, part of their job. Okay. Still, when we give students, we we have given uh, teachers many questionnaires to understand how they think about learning and what are their beliefs about learning. And still, quite a few uh, teachers do not agree with the idea that students are mainly responsible for their learning or learning outcomes are mainly uh, due to the fact you know, the students, they think themselves as the conveyors of information and their uh, duty is to, to provide information rather than to help students develop their own skills. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, so we're gonna, we're gonna drill down into some of the components of what goes into this idea of learning how to learn. Um, you've mentioned several of them already, metacognition, motivation. I right. wanna go through some of those yeah. topics one by okay, one. Okay, so... Uh, right. Uh, when we think about learning how to learn, we think about students 
who have basically knowledge about their learning and about how they learn as learners and strategies that they can use to help them learn. And these strategies can be cognitive strategies, like how we monitor our learning. Um, uh, you know, the strategy, for example, their cognitive strategies and metacognitive strategies. So first of all, you require an awareness of your learning. For example, an awareness of uh, uh, that you don't understand something. Okay, many students will read a text and they don't know, they don't ask themselves questions like to understand, they just keep on reading. They don't ask, ask themselves questions, do I understand what I'm reading? They don't test themselves. So strategies like stopping and asking yourself, do I understand what I'm reading? Um, uh, what are my goals here? Uh, have I answered these questions? These are strategies that help us monitor our learning. And uh, a lot of these strategies are acquired without teaching from observing others learn. And a lot of these strategies are ac actually acquired by children from, from their parents when they're very early on. When parents with preschool children, when they read to them, when they ask children questions like, you know, what was the story about? Um, when they ask them, did you understand that? When they discuss this, these are all ways that parents can use to help their, their children monitor their learning. So a lot of the strategies children and students already have, but many students do not have them. And there are, of course, many more elaborate strategies that teachers can teach. Um, so one, one of the, the ways teacher can help uh, students is uh, by teaching them the knowledge and the strategies that are required to monitor their learning, to plan their learning, to evaluate their learning. Yeah, that's very helpful. So I, I want to go a little bit further with this idea that how teachers teach needs to be yeah. informed by consciously trying to foster and develop these capabilities of independent learning. One of the things you say that I think is really interesting, I've never heard anybody say it before, is that teachers should also be teaching their students theories of learning uh, and right. principles of learning. Can you say a little bit more about what you mean by that? Yeah, yes, because a lot of um, teaching for self-regulated learning sometimes is translated into, into, into teaching strategies explicitly and directly mm -hmm. in a kind of transmission-like mode. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it's much better if you embed these strategies within an, an understanding, developing to students an understanding of how learning happens in the brain so that they can understand then what is the purpose of using these strategies and why these strategies are going to be helpful? A lot of um, the reasons why students do not use appropriate strategies for learning is because they don't understand how learning happens, mm -hmm. because they think that learning is basically memorization, mm -hmm. that they read something and it goes into some part of their brain where it's uh, uh, somehow stored. And that the best strategies, if you ask students, what strategies they use when they learn is they say we reread, rereading, um, and we uh, and recalling information. These are very simple strategies, and they show us that basically students have a very simplistic model of learning. Mm -hmm. Now, research has shown that the teaching strategies is more effective when students know uh, why the strategies are effective how to use these strategies, in what context to use these strategies. And they're motivated to use them because they understand their importance. Uh, so for me, it is important when you build an environment um, that is directed towards helping students learn to actually teach them about learning. And um, and I think this is this is very important. For example, here in South Australia, um, in order for students in secondary education to take their final exams for accreditation, they have to take a course in learning um, at year 10. And I think this is an excellent idea. Uh, the problem is that many teachers don't know how to design a course in learning. Right. And the, the, 
the guidelines that exist are not specific enough to help teachers understand how to teach their students about learning. But I think that we need to do more. Uh, in fact, I have worked, we have worked here in our team with some teachers to develop curricula for, for a learning course for secondary school students, mm -hmm. because we think that this is an important aspect of their, of their development and of their ability to learn how to learn, yeah, of developing absolutely. this ability. Yeah. Thank you for that. So a uh, couple of things of what you just said. You've already touched on this, but one of the other reasons uh, to, for students to learn about principles of learning is also ineffective study strategies. You mentioned, yeah. the book, for example, people who stay up all night the night before an exam cramming. You know, right. it's a very ineffective use of time and a very ineffective way of studying. So it's not only having effective strategies, but also recognizing and changing ineffective strategies that many students are really wasting their time and energy. And I think that's a really important insight. Yeah. Yeah. Which also stem from this basic misunderstanding mm -hmm. of how it is that we of how we learn. They don't understand that cramming doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. It also seems to me that a, another implication of what you just said is that teachers themselves need to learn more about right. the principles of learning in order to be able to share them with students. Um, uh, I, I think that's not always a conscious yeah. focus of some teacher education programs. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. And I'm really dismayed when I see that teacher education programs are cutting down on, on learning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they add all sorts of other things which are also important, but, you know, learning how children learn is the foundation um, of teaching. Yep. Uh, so a couple of other elements here I want to spend some time talking about with you. One is, you've already touched on this, the importance of metacognition, reflection, right. uh, monitoring, self-reflection, monitoring, evaluation, planning, the second level reflection on Am I understanding what strategies work for me? What kind of learner am I, et cetera? I think that that's really a crucial part of this idea of developing a self-regulating or autonomous learner. Yeah, I agree with you. And also meta, not only cognitive meta conceptual awareness, but also awareness about the self. Mm -hmm. And, you know, who am I as a learner? You know, what are my, what are the strategies that I use? You know, what, what are my goals in learning? Am I an effective learner? Uh, can I change? And um, again, there is um, a, a very uh, nice and experimental school here in Australia that is associated with Flinders, the Australian Science and Mathematics School. And um, they have a very, uh, they have a, a very a curriculum that stresses independent learning and they make it a point to to have meetings with students every day, mm -hmm. to have them think about their learning, about you know how effective their learning strategies are, to think about themselves as learners, a lot of metacognitive stuff, not mm -hmm. only about cognition itself, but also about yourself, your motivation, your strategies, um, you know, in order to be able to understand better. And this is very important, particularly for teenagers as they grow and they form an identity and they're still confused about their goals and about their their future, uh, what what kind of future profession they they want to, to follow and what they want to become. So yeah, metacognition is extremely important, both in the strict sense, metacognition of your own cognition in terms of studying skills, but also more generally, you know, about yourself as a learner. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I want to ask you a question about that. So we're going to get to motivation in a second, but another interesting element of your argument uh, is about emotions. It isn't right. just, you say, awareness of your cognition, but also awareness of your emotions and recognizing that just with uh, study strategies, that there are effective or ineffective or counterproductive study strategies or learning strategies, there's also counterproductive or uh, unhelpful emotions and understanding right. and monitoring that role. I'd like to hear you say some more about that. Yeah, this is very important because uh, imagine having a student in, in the class that worries about math, let's say, you know, math anxiety is very uh, common. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if the student is preoccupied, you know, with thoughts about failure, 
with um, uh, thoughts that of inadequacy, you know, that, are, oh, I'm going to fail the test, I'm not ready for math, uh, I'm not good at math, I cannot understand this. this these uh, thoughts preoccupy them, they preoccupy themselves and they do not allow them to be, um, to pay attention. They don't allow them to learn. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's extremely important. Uh, to understand for teachers to understand that if they have a person there who is anxious about their learning, they're not really listening to what the teacher says because they're pre preoccupied thinking about negative thoughts. Yeah. So it's extremely important for teachers to be sensitive to, to that, to, to understand um, the students' emotions, to understand how they may feel, how they may be preoccupied by other thoughts and help them create an environment of trust uh, so that students can trust them, they can open up, they can feel that they can talk about their anxieties, that uh, they have an environment where mistakes are accepted, uh, where they're seen as, uh, as uh, really opportunities for learning better rather than as failures. So th this is very important for learning, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great point. So a couple more questions. So I wanna come back to the notion of motivation. Uh, which is another key element here. It isn't just learning how to learn. It's also wanting to learn, desiring to learn, enjoying right. learning. Uh, that's another aspect of this sort of self-regulated learner. Can you say more about the motivational element and how we promote that in uh, teaching and learning environments? Yeah, this is this is um, this is very important. Um, so, so I think one way to promote them is to have students. Um, take some initiative about their learning, mm -hmm. you know, talk to them about what is of interest to them, trying to take some of their ideas into consideration when planning uh, the curriculum. So mm -hmm. to the extent that we can do that, even within the, the narrow borders of a specific topic, we can still engage in conversations to students about what is of interest to them. We can still assign projects to them that they feel that they would be you know, interested in learning more about. So I think taking students into consideration and giving them some freedom of choice is very important in creating, um, in creating this, this you know, motivation to learn in the context of the, you know, the, the classroom and the, and the curriculum. <clears throat> so, and also, again, you know, feeling, giving students uh, positive feedback, uh, in, in really telling them when they're doing uh, well, encouraging their effort, um, not, you know, whether they're, every student, you know, they, they, they're different. You know, the, some know more than others, but progress is very important. Effort is very important. And teachers to recognize this effort on the part of the students is really paramount, is extremely important and makes them students feel that they are succeeding, that their learning effort is being recognized. Yeah, that's great. So I want to sort of begin to sort of loop this back around to, to for closure. So a concept that is one of the first concepts you mentioned in the booklet, we talk about it all the time. We talk about lifelong learning or the lifelong learner. Um, yeah. it, it always bothers me that when we talk about that, no one really seems to think about what that really means. Uh, and it seems to me that one key element of the lifelong learner is just what this booklet is about. A person who is a learner, who sees themselves as a learner, who enjoys learning, who will continue to learn beyond the years of being in formal schooling because it's part of their identity and it's part of their sense of what you just talked about, their own progress, their own growth. That a person who really does enjoy that and is good at it will become a lifelong learner, but we don't always think about that as a conscious educational goal. How do you see this working out in this notion of, of the lifelong learner who really is an, across the arc of a lifetime seeing themselves as actively in control of their learning and growth. Well, this is what the booklet is about, is right. how we how we help learners develop these skills that are important for lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. It is really interesting to me that when we see the arguments for lifelong learning, mm -hmm. these are made mostly in terms of the changing needs of our society, 
Um, the fact that the technology now has developed, there is information there that what uh, we need is more the critical skills to uh, evaluate the information rather than to memorize that uh, we live in a society where we change many jobs, so we need skills. So the the arguments for lifelong learning are morely, mostly made on uh, economic terms, on uh, terms like, you know, society is changing, technology is changing, and not in terms of the individual. Mm -hmm. And what you, what the gains that you achieve as an individual, if you develop yourself to be able to enjoy learning. I think the enjoyment of learning is is is, is an amazing thing. It it keeps you alive, you know, even to your old age, you know, you find people who are there. Um, this is what distinguishes, you know, people who are who are still alive, you know, the 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 enjoyment they get from learning new things. Um, so it is really, it's not only in terms of economics and technology, but it's also in terms of developing uh, students and individuals, you know, who are, who are really, um, who really enjoy, enjoy life because they learn out of it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the perfect note on which to end this. I do want to urge people to click on the link and read the rest of the booklet. There's a lot in there that we didn't get a chance to talk about. But Stella, it's been great talking with you. You've given us a really exciting set of ideas and a really a different way to think about education from the way we often talk about it. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you.